Please watch out, spoilers ahead. A drunk man who happens to be the former captain of US Army, Nathan Algren, takes on a show performance advertising their new gun. After the show is over he is fired and an old friend of him approaches him after a long time. Nathan was surprised that he is still alive and he takes an invitation to a certain meeting. He accepts and he meets his old commanding officer Colonel Bagley who made him feel uncomfortable. In the table there was a Japanese businessman, Omura, who wanted to hire Nathan to train the Imperial Army but Nathan wants more money in order to do it. After that Nathan starts laughing at their faces and he takes a minute off to calm down where Bagley goes to talk to him and they have a heated conversation. He finally arrives in Japan and he is in deep thinking as he watches Mount Fuji from a distance. He embarks in Tokyo where he is welcomed by Simon Graham, a British interpreter who gives Nathan a little tour and explains him some things he should know. He's taken to the Imperial Palace where he will meet the Emperor Meiji and he will be asked some things about the American tribes where Nathan says that they were very brave people. Emperor proceeds to thank him as they leave the palace. Later that night, Nathan and his friend Sergeant Zebulon Gant will have a meeting with Simon. Simon makes a weird question where Nathan gets mad and is about to demonstrate it to him but bunch of memories start coming back to him, memories of atrocities he committed during the American Indian War. He stops and wishes Simon a good night making him leave. The next morning they're training the Japanese Imperial Army where Bagley and Omura come to Nathan and tell him to chase the rebellions and put a stop to them, but Nathan insists that they are not ready for the task and demonstrates it to him. However Bagley still sticks with his order. They arrive in the battlefield where they start to load up and prepare for war. Nathan orders to take aim but hold fire until he give them the signal. The samurais make a grand opening blowing the olifants and have the imperial army shake in fear. They mess up and start firing before Nathan gives them signal, leading to a total mess and miscoordination. Many die and Sergeant Zebulon dies with no way to Nathan helping him. As the war continues Nathan himself is caught in a tough situation where he has to fight many samurais at once until a red samurai comes trying to finish him but ultimately fails to leading to Nathan killing him. As he's about to get killed the samurai's leader Katsumoda tells them to back off and take him as a hostage. He's taken to their village where he'll be treated to his wounds. Katsumoda has a talk with his son and Ujio where Ujio says that he will kill him if Nathan doesn't kill himself but Katsumoda tells him to leave him for now since they need information on their new enemy. Nathan can't sleep at night since he keeps getting memories of his atrocities on the American Indian tribes so he begs for sake, a Japanese alcoholic beverage, in order to get him drunk. In the morning he wakes up sober and wanders around the village where he gets weird stares from the people there. Later on he's taken to Katsumoda and they have a little chat. They introduce each other and Nathan wants to ask him questions but Katsumoda ignores him. He has a sparring match with Ujio but he realizes how bad he was with the sword and the other day takes sword lessons from him. He's taken to Katsumoda again and Katsumoda asks him about his war with the Indian tribes. Nathan feels frustrated and asks him why is he being kept there in the first place. Katsumoda tells him that he will remain there until spring comes and snow melts. Nathan enjoys dinner with the family that is keeping him and he learns couple new words. The housewife Taka, sister of Katsumoda and the wife of the red samurai killed by Nathan expresses herself to Katsumoda how she doesn't want Nathan in their house anymore but she's forced to stay quiet by Katsumoda. Spring comes and Nathan and Ujio have their rematch. Other warriors bet as Ujio wins the two matches but Nathan shocks them all in the third one, where he manages to get a draw and earn their respect for his improvement. Night comes and the village enjoys a show that is put by the leader Katsumoda and other villagers. Everything seems to go fine until Nathan notices someone on the roof taking aim at Katsumoda so he shouts at him. The intruders were ninja who were hired by Omura to kill Katsumoda and his people. It's a bloody fight and Nathan tries his best to protect Taka and her children and at the end they come out victorious. Nathan and Katsumoda have their last meeting as Katsumoda gives him his books back and Nathan gives his farewell to Taka which seems she was quite saddened by his sudden leave. They arrive in Tokyo where Nathan will finally be free and unites with Simon and Bagley. The Emperor meets up with Katsumoda where he asks for help on how to make Japan go towards modernism. He has a meeting with Omura and Bagley where Omura orders him to take command of the army and fight off the samurais which Nathan can't refuse. Katsumoto goes to the governal meeting of Japan and is kicked out since swords were not allowed in and he refused to let it go. 
Later on he's told to kill himself in order to save Omura time and effort on killing him. Bagley pays Nathan the money he earned and shares some information about Katsumoto how he was gonna get killed by Omura, so Nathan goes out trying to save him but he's stopped by three random people who draw swords at him. He quickly finishes them off and heads to the place where Katsumoto is being held where he pretends to be the President of the United States and allow himself to get in. He manages to pull it off and meet with Katsumoto where they will kill the guards and plan their escape. On their way to escape, Katsumoto's son gets shot and Nathan runs to get him to safety. They see he won't make it so Nobutada makes one last request, so he can hold off the Imperial Army until Katsumoto and Nathan escape. They make it back to the village where they get ready for the last war with the Imperial Army. Taka makes one last request to Nathan, she wants him to use her husband's armor in order to honor her family and he accepts. They make last preparations and then set off. The other morning they arrive in the battlefield where Omura requests their surrender but Katsumoto refuses to. Before the battle starts Simon Graham takes his leave as he observes the battle from above. The Imperial Army starts out ruthless with their cannons breaking into their formation, making the samurais retreat back where they set up a trap. They hide and as the first wave of battalions make it past the trap point the samurais set up fire around them and then charge from all sides. The rest of the Imperial Army retreat to the back. Bagley is watching it all and he can't believe his eyes what's happening. Nathan and Katsumoto decide to make one last march and go in front of the enemy. They all charge as Omura takes charge and orders all soldiers to fire at the samurais. Nathan throws a sword right at Bagley killing him. Many die and Nathan gets wounded in his arm but Katsumoto's wounds are worse and he's in verge of death. The Imperial Captain orders to cease fire. Ignoring Omura's order and all soldiers kneel down to him to pay Katsumoto his deserved respect as he takes his own life. Days later Nathan shows up at the Emperor's palace, gifting him Katsumoto's sword. Emperor Meiji says they should not forget who they are and where they come from so he rejects the trade offer from the Americans. Omura tries to have one last talk but the Emperor threatens him that he would seize his family assets and give them to the people of Japan. Meiji asks Nathan Algrain how Katsumoto died and they have a long chat. Nathan makes it back to Taka where they manage to lead a happy life together. That concludes our second project, if you enjoyed it you can subscribe us and like the video. Thanks for watching.